So what is a PhD? Even though this is a pretty basic question, a lot of students and academics don't really have a clear answer. And that matters because the way you think of a PhD and what a PhD means and what it's for affects the way you approach it. So when it comes to defining a PhD, I'll often hear things like, it's an original contribution to the body of knowledge. Now this has some truth to it, but I think there's more to it than simply being original. And I think there's also a problem with this definition in that it focuses only on the output without really telling you anything about the process. Another definition I'll hear is that a PhD is about becoming an independent researcher. I really dislike this because I don't think there's any such thing as an independent researcher. Yes, of course, you need to be able to make your own decisions and conduct your own research, but you need other people. And thinking of it as becoming independent often leads people to try and do everything themselves. Most professional academics collaborate with and consult with others, and you shouldn't have to figure it all out on your own. Another definition I've heard is that some people say a PhD means you're the world's leading expert in your subject. And if that's the case, then I'll give mine back because I certainly wasn't the world's leading expert in my own research area. Often, I'll also hear metaphorical definitions like it's a driving license for research or a PhD is a journey or a PhD is a marathon, not a sprint. But these really don't tell you very much. So we need a definition that gives us some insight into the process and what's required, while also differentiating it from other types of qualification. Now at a basic level, we could see a PhD as the highest level academic qualification you can get. And some people see it this way, when I ask them about why they decided to do a PhD, they'll say that it's because they wanted a way of completing their education. So they see a PhD as the absolute pinnacle. But if we run with this idea, if we view the education system as like a pyramid with a PhD at the top and primary or elementary school at the bottom, once we get past the levels of compulsory education, then as you go from one level to the next, some people leave and those who choose to and who have the grades to qualify move up to the higher levels. So what you end up with is only the people who've done very well at all the other levels of the education system who then go on to do PhDs. But there's a problem with thinking of a PhD this way. And the problem is that throughout the education system, throughout those earlier levels, there's a certain consistency to the way things are done. You have a set syllabus and there's a set timetable. So everyone on the same course does the same thing at the same time and then everybody does the same exams at the end. But in a PhD, there is no set syllabus and no set timetable. You have to develop and manage your own unique project. And at the end, there is no standard exam. You have a defense that's unique based on your own work. There are other differences too. In an undergraduate degree, for example, you're generally dealing with well-established knowledge and you're given information in a carefully designed order to help you learn. But in a PhD, you're working at the blurry edge of knowledge where you have to dive into the tangled mess of academic literature, which isn't written or structured to help you learn because it's written for an expert audience. And to make it even more difficult, much of that material will be contradictory. So in so many ways, the conditions and the requirements of a PhD are not only different to those in the previous levels of the education system, they are the exact opposite. So even if you did exceptionally well throughout your education up to this point, the skills that got you into a PhD are not the same skills you need to finish one. So instead of thinking of a PhD as the top level of the education system, I think of it as the bottom level, the entry level of the professional academic system. 
And the purpose of a PhD is to develop and then demonstrate the skills of a professional academic researcher. Now, you may have no intention of becoming a professional academic researcher, but this is what the system is set up for. And there are a few advantages to thinking of a PhD in this way. First, I think it takes at least some of the pressure off. So the PhD is not the completion of your education. It's not the culmination of your life's work. It's just the beginning. Second, because we're framing it as an entry-level qualification, then it's not about showing how good you already are. It's about learning. And if you understand a few basic principles, then you can design your project to help you develop the skills that you need with the assumption that you'll make a load of mistakes along the way. Now, this is another key difference between a PhD and much of the rest of the education system. In a conventional exam or a conventional course, mistakes are penalized and they're recorded forever in your grades. So having been trained in that system for so long, many PhD students I speak to are terrified of making mistakes. But in the professional academic system, nobody really cares how many mistakes you make on the way to making a discovery. And in fact, mistakes are usually a necessary part of the process. So what do you think of this definition, that a PhD is the entry qualification to the world of professional academia, and that it's about developing and then demonstrating the skills of a professional academic researcher? Do you have a better definition? Would you modify my definition in some way? Do you have a better way of expressing it? If so, let me know in the comments below. And finally, if you like this video, check out my website at phd.academy and sign up for email notifications so I can let you know when I release new videos. That's all from me, and I'll see you next time.